What's going on everybody, it's Sean here and I am back today to give you guys a review of the Adidas ZX500 RM in the grey and scarlet colorway. Before we go on with the review, I just want to give a quick thank you to Adidas Canada for sending me over this pair. These dropped back in July for $140 US dollars or $190 here in Canada. The official colorway for this shoe is grey 4, footwear white and scarlet. So this model is like an updated version of the classic 1984 Adidas sneaker, the ZX500. That shoe was the debut sneaker of Adidas' ZX line. And then here we are today, 34 years later, paying homage to that shoe, but retrofitted with today's technology and cushioning systems. So the color scheme of grey, white, and red is a direct nod to the color scheme found on the original ZX500. Taking a closer look at the shoe, specifically at the toe box, this toe box area is constructed with this light grey colored mesh. Wrapping around the edge of the toe box, we have this very buttery, darker grey suede. Towards the back half of the shoe, this is constructed using a very soft grey nylon. Overlaid on top of the midfoot of both the lateral side, as well as the medial side, we have the Adidas 3 stripes done in a darker shade of grey. That suede that we found earlier around the toe box also finds itself around the back heel as well. At the top of the back of the shoe, here we have this very exaggerated pull tab and it's overlaid with this synthetic red leather. As we take a look at the center area of the shoe, the middle four eyelets are constructed out of plastic and these are found on both sides. As for the laces, these are a flat style lace done in almost like a very pale olive or like a light beige color. Underneath the laces, we have this very flexible nylon tongue and at the very top, we have this red tag that has the Adidas branding in white. As we move on to the interior of the shoe, so the inner liner is also done in like this gray color, and then these come with a fairly padded insole with the Adidas branding on the heel in blue. So the upper of these shoes sits atop a full length boost midsole. Wrapping around the back half of the shoe, here we have this TPU heel stabilizer which is this thicker gray that wraps around the back heel. We also have EVA foam inserts, this is found along the back heel wrapping around both sides and also found on the lateral edge of the forefoot. By incorporating these foam inserts alongside the boost midsole, this is supposed to give you additional support and additional stability. As I turn these over to the bottom so you guys can see the outsole, this is pretty much entirely done in black rubber. We have the Adidas branding found along the middle, and then we have this exposed boost found right in the center. From a sizing standpoint, so Adidas Canada sent me these in a size 10. My feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and these fit me perfectly like a glove. If your feet are very wide though, I felt a little bit of pinching around this forefoot area right here, just below the bottom lace. However, when I unlaced them and readjusted it, it was fine, but just something to keep in mind if you guys have really, really wide feet. For comparison's sake, I also get a size 10 in the NMD R1 Prime Knit, which does fit bigger than this one, and I also get size 10 in other models like the Ultra Boost 3.0 and the Yeezy Boost 350 V1. On the other hand, I get a size 10.5 in the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 and the Ultra Boost 1.0 and 2.0. Comfort wise, so these actually surprised me with just how comfortable these are. I kind of expected them to be more like an NMD at first, but when I tried these on on foot and actually walked around in them, I'd actually rank these above the Aniki, and if anything, they're just under the Ultra Boost from a casual wear standpoint. You can really feel this Boost midsole underneath your foot, and it gives you that nice plush cushioning that we've come to expect from Boost. So if you guys are tired of Ultra Boost and you're looking for a good alternative for just casual wear, then I definitely consider these ones. So with all that being said, now let me lace these up and show you guys how these look on feet. I love when sneaker companies are able to take a classic silhouette from their archives and infuse modern day touches to make it really appropriate for today's market. I think that the ZX500 RM is definitely a successful take from Adidas and I'm excited to see what future colorways they're going to release down the road. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram as well at esco8 
and check out my website at seango.ca. Before I sign off, one final thank you goes out to the good people at Adidas Canada for always showing love. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one.